there say that it's far better and much wiser to prevent the horses from escaping the corral than trying to catch them later once they've escaped. Just the making of even spurious contentions and allegations often attracts significant media attention, and therefore the adage, if there's smoke, well, there must be fire, turns into a public affairs coup for Israeli distractors. By turning a myth into something that becomes an acceptable part of the public discourse, it starts to make people wonder, think, that there must be, as a result of this public discussion, some basis for these false accusations. And nowhere is this more pronounced, nowhere is this more marked than in international forums. International forums often serve as venues for ever-increasing attempts to institute both civil and criminal proceedings against current and former government officials and military personnel for alleged international law violations. Witness, for example, the campaign to establish criminal, international criminal court jurisdiction over Israelis. The campaign to bring Israel's security barrier, you know, the barrier that's designed to prevent terrorism, and you know what? It does. Well, the campaign to bring Israel's security barrier before the International Court of Justice is just another example of the cynical use made of international forums. Abuses of international forums to, dominate, to demonize Israel and apply double standards to it are designed, among other things, to intimidate Israelis from acting out of fear of prosecution, and these actions do in fact hamper international relations, all the while aimed at delegitimizing de the state of Israel. Particularly unfortunate is the exploitation of forums for human rights in the structure of the United Nations, typically spearheaded by states notorious themselves for their total disregard of human rights as platforms for generating extreme anti-Israel bias and a disproportionate focus on Israel. Especially lamentable is the fact that due to the compulsive and obsessive fixation on Israeli policy and the valuable time thus spent unjustifiably reproaching Israel, appropriate and urgent attention is not given to truly grave human rights violations being committed elsewhere in the world today. These and similar issues are the subject of today's session. Please allow me now to extend a hearty welcome, a hearty welcome to our distinguished panelists speaking in the second session on anti-Israel activity in international forums, legal aspects. A, Israel's former ambassador to the United Nations, Professor Gabriela Shalev, member of Knesset, Dr. Nachman Shai, Professor Arye Noor, and the United States Ambassador to Israel, Daniel Shapiro. Uh, I first met Nachman Shai when we were both serving together in the permanent mission of Israel to the United Nations in New York some, some years ago. Remember Nachman? <laughs> Nachman was then the mission's <laughs> spokesperson. It is therefore with great pleasure that I introduce to you my friend, my personal friend, member of Knesset, Dr. Nachman Shai. Dr. Shai currently serves as a distinguished member of the Knesset Foreign Affairs and Defense Committee, and in fact heads up the committee's delegitimization team. Dr. Shai was previously IDF spokesman and former senior vice president of the United Jewish Communities and its director general in Israel. Dr. Shai will talk on Israel's response to the challenges of the new war. Dr. Shai, 